let's talk about the solution. Um, what is what is how how do you get peace in this region? There's a variety of responses that I've seen from people. I was speaking to somebody last night, for example, who says the only solution is to get rid of all the Palestinians, that they need to be moved, that they need to go to Egypt or to Jordan, and that uh, just to abandon, they need to somehow get out. Of course, that wouldn't be done uh, voluntarily. It would have to be done by force if you're going to do it or coercion uh, or fear, right, to get people to abandon so uh, that's that's one solution. A lot of people, you know, you got Ben Shapiro here in the United States saying that pretty much that there should be no Palestinian state except uh, Jordan. And he would prefer for everybody to, to be gone, all the Palestinians to be gone. Um, that's definitely a sentiment. There's uh, I, there's one state solutions, two state solution federations. There's after this. So after October 7th, there's a question. W- is that any of that even possible? A one state or a, a one state you know, a Confederate situation. Um, I mean, what what is the sentiment that you're hearing? I mean, you're you're unique. I, I well, first of all, are you unique? Are you unique in Israel? Being wanting to see both sides, wanting to build peace. Do you find yourself fighting with a lot of your fellow Israelis who are saying to you, "Adar, you're crazy." I mean, how unique are you? So I'm not unique in the sense that uh, I want peace. Most people here want peace. I'm unique in the fact that I understand that Israel very much is um, is part of the problem. Um, you know, the, the, there ha- there's this narrative that we've done everything we can, and it's just all up to them to accept us. Mm. Um, so there's, while most Israelis want peace, very few are creative in what that looks like. It's more so we've tried. It's up to them. Once they acknowledge our right to exist, then we can have peace. And until then, we'll just need to continue to defending ourselves. So I am constantly speaking to Israelis, um, trying to give them an, an understanding of what more we can do. Because I think in any conflict, whether uh, a national or regional, uh, you, you should never depend on change for for your condition to improve. You should always take uh, responsibility and there's there's so much Israel uh, can do and you know I'll get into you know how I think we need to start looking at this um, there are people calling for the removal of Palestinians from the land there are people calling for the removal of Israelis from the land uh, these people shouldn't be taken seriously right we need to accept that both Israelis and Palestinians are here to stay how can we build a shared future for both of us for Israelis our main priority is security for Palestinians, it's justice. So how can we find a solution that provides justice for Palestinians and security for Israelis? There is there is a way to do this, and this is the framework we should we should um, be be working with. Um, there's an increasing movement in Palestinian activism that calls uh, for the dismantling of Israel, and I, I believe that is also a viewpoint that shouldn't be taken seriously. First of all. It's not, it's not realistic. So Jews aren't going to consent to any solution that puts them in danger. And they don't have any reason to believe that, that they will remain safe on the land uh, if they don't have a state that can protect them. So hmm. if we want, and, and we, 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 we could get into that, but yeah. they, if, if we want to transform Israel to be one that is easier for Palestinians to accept, uh, dismantling it is not the way to do it. So Israelis are big on um, on change, right? We've had eight months of protests, Israelis rallying to change their government, but Israelis are not going to rally to put themselves in danger. Mm-hmm. So instead of trying to, instead of uh, activists around the world working to dismantle Israel, they should actually work with Israelis and with Palestinians to transform Israel. Right. So I tell Palestinians, The best thing you could do is to accept Israel's right to exist. And the best thing Israelis could do is to transform Israel to make it a state that is easier for Palestinians to exist. Right. Right. I I agree with you that there is definitely a push to dismantle Israel as a Jewish nation, um, as an ethno nation. There's that is that is something that I experienced mostly in the international community when I was over there in the West Bank in Palestine talking to Palestinians 
they don't have that sentiment by and large. Maybe the young people, when you go to the, the universities, universities are always, you know, kids are always more radical in their viewpoints. Um, so in mm -hmm. the university, of course, there was definitely more radical, radical thinking. But by and large, the population of the Palestinians, when I would ask them, do you want a one state? Do you want to live together in a one state situation? And they all said, no, no, we want our own state. We want to live. We want a Palestinian country. And of course, Israelis say the same thing. No, we want to, we want an Israeli country. So there's no appetite for a one state solution. It seemed from my perspective, this was four years ago. Maybe things have changed. I can't imagine they've drastically changed that much in four years. If anything, after October 7th, more so this idea of wanting to be separated. But when I came back to the United States, there was definitely a battle amongst uh, the, those who were very pro-Palestinian in the, in the United States, where they were calling for a one-state solution, that a two-state is just continued apartheid. Um, and so my thinking was, yes, we should work within the framework of what the people who are actually living on that land want, right? That there's, there's an appetite for a two-state solution, and that's it. That's the majority thinking of people. And yeah, you're right. There's fringe people on both sides that want to see the people go away. There's fringe Palestinians who want all the Israelis to go. And I'm like, well, where? You know, and they go any, somewhere away from here, off the land. They can't be here. They're settlers. Um, and then there's, of course, Israelis that say the same thing about the Palestinians. Just go. Get out of here. There's a whole Arab, whole Arab land. Go somewhere else. Don't be here, right? But they're fringe. They are fringe. The, the, and they're loud. That's the problem, right? They're loud and they're fringe. Um, I, I will say, though, I have transformed my, in the four years I came back saying, no, two states, the only way to go. These people cannot live together. They don't want to live together. So don't try, don't try to force it. I now have shifted my thinking. And it was only recently, only within the last few weeks, actually, where now I think I, I do think a one state uh, and an eradication of the ethno nation is the only solution. I think that you could do a two-state solution for a time period. It's probably the right thing to do at first. But I think you ultimately head to a one-state uh, eradication of an ethno-nation. And then whatever you call it is whatever you call it. I, I don't see any future in any other way. And the only reason is because of the resources. Palestine. How can Palestine ever be its own independent nation, truly sovereign nation, and yet have to beg Israel for all of the resources that a sovereign nation needs to be a sovereign nation, right? To like, like the Oslo Accords, when you break it down, they were saying, well, we got to share and Israel will be the ones that are kind of the custodians over the shared resources like water, airspace, borders, military, security, right? It would all be like Israel controls it all. And then Palestine kind of has its own. That to me is not a nation. That's not a sovereign nation. That's a state, so then it would have to be a state within Israel, like it's like a confederation where there's like Jewish states and and Arab states, but inside of this big, you know, nation. And then everybody has their equal rights. I, so how, how do you envision it for the Palestinian? Like if there's a two state solution, let's say, and you work with that, what would be a just and equitable solution for Palestinians? Would Israel still control all of the resources? The ports, the airspace, the borders, yeah, the security. So right, right now, the way Israel justifies controlling all of that is because there's no security, right? They, they think that, and, and there's good reason for thinking this. It's important to understand that most of the policies uh, that are harming Palestinians are justified by security. So Jewish right. security comes at the expense of Palestinian freedom, right? So the safer Jews are, the more free Palestinians will be. Um, th this is also well, one, or you one could way say the safer Jews are. It's because the Palestinians are not free, right? It's like well, because we've hindered well, them to a point. It's a, so cycle, now, it's a cycle for sure. Yeah, right. Yeah. The the more the less freedom Palestinians have, the more radicalized they become, the more likely that they're inclined to engage in violent acts. So I'm not saying it's that there's there's a chicken and egg thing, and we're just stuck in the cycle that right. the, you know we care for our security that radicalizes them. They lose hope. They attack us. We further justify our security. But something I do want to point out is that there's this there's this notion that our goal is to just expand as far as possible. And Israel has always had some expansionist elements to it. There's always been a segment of society that has wanted to expand the land as far as possible. But the majority of the population, the reason they justify 
uh, any policy is not from an expansionist perspective, it's a security perspective. And I'll just share one poll that came out this week. Uh, only 20% of Israelis support building settlements in Gaza, right? So 80% do not want to um, build settlements there, which I think is a great sign. Uh, and 75% think Benjamin Netanyahu is unfit to, to lead. So it looks like we don't know. We know what's happening now is tragic. We don't know what good will come of it. One good thing that we could almost guarantee is that this will be the end of, of BB. And I think it's it's long overdue. Uh, and we have, you know, both Israelis and Palestinians have been plagued by by bad leadership. Um, yeah. In terms of like living in an ethno state, the majority of both populations want to live in an ethno state for for different reasons. Um, we, you know, we are two populations that are distinct culturally, different religions, we speak a different language, and we've been in conflict with one another for a hundred years. There's a very deep level of fear, mistrust, and hate. And to think that being in a one state solution where we're competing over control of the government and the military would just be kumbaya, you know, th there's no reason to think that that's how it's going to turn out. So there's, there's immense fear and resistance to a solution like that. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, the the two state solution also isn't popular you know the majority of both populations uh, a are aren't so keen on a, the other side having a state so close to them for fear or because they feel like it's unjust uh, and they just want access to the whole land to to visit family or holy sites uh, so i think we need to start being creative and looking at solutions like uh, confederations or a federation yeah. uh, the distinction would be a confederation would be kind of like the european union how you have um many countries, but there's kind of cooperation uh, between them. A federation would be more like the United States or Switzerland, where you have multiple states in the U.S. or cantons inside Switzerland. Uh, you could have, for example, a system of checks and balances, which, you know, allow for populations, both populations to self-determine in their own way, where they're not competing over control of government, whether that's having a Palestinian government, an Israeli government, and a shared government. Uh, it would require having less federal control and populations have more local control. I think this is really the way we need to start yeah. looking at it. And it's interesting how unpopular it is, right? You have like the international community, they've kind of been, you know, just two states, zero, zero cre creativity. That's just what they're stuck on. And you have this new wave of activism, activists who are very like, just stuck on one secular state, um, for all people, which is a great ideal, right? The idealist in me says, let's do it. But the realist in me just understands that that would be a disaster. And what I what I want to say to all activists, all people who care, it's important in our activism to be grounded in, in reality and uh, and pragmatism. You know, don't, right. don't just think what what a beautiful, what the most perfect outcome you can envision is. Think of what is actually viable, what we can achieve. And I think that's really the way to make progress. Well, it's unfortunate. So you're saying that this this federation idea, which I think is the only way forward, and th th that's what I do think that. And you bring up really good points as to why there needs to be this sort of separation, and that there's different languages, different cultures, different religions, and that is, I think, what makes the region beautiful. There's uh, it, it, the history there for all three major Abrahamic religions is amazing. Um, but it, so it's unfortunate. So you're saying that there's not very many people that want this, that want a federation or a confederation. I would think a federation probably more likely. So, well, I, I a, kind of a blend, I would suppose, I suppose. But this is what I mean by a one state solution. There's no way that you can create a sovereign Palestine without giving them access to what sovereign nations need, which is sovereignty over their resources, their airspace, their borders, the ability to build airports, the ability to have a military, uh, the ability to trade and have port, right, all of these things that are being denied Palestine, saying, oh, yeah, you know, it's their, it's their own place, their own resources, it's their own government controlled this, but their government has to constantly ask for from Israel, can we build water infrastructure? We need permits. Can we build, mm -hmm. you know, they're constantly having to ask another country, can we do this? So it's not a real government. It's not a real sovereignty. That seems more like a state inside the United States, right? Where you're saying, okay, can we have this and that? And each state has a level of autonomy in its own laws, but, and some laws are in conflict with one another, you know, like abortion rights or at the time gay marriage before it was, uh, before the Supreme Court rulings. But so there's, that to me seems the only real true 
path forward is to share and to allow that freedom and sharing while people govern themselves in their enclaves. So they and mm-hmm. really breaking up Israel into, you know, I, I certainly three states, maybe with Gaza being one state, West Bank being another state, Israel being another state, but maybe even more states. Maybe there's a desire to break up and have like five individual or six states that govern themselves and that come together in a federal government um, in Jerusalem. But that's so. Do you think this is a growing idea? It seems to be the only solution. I mean, everything's been tried for all these years. So, yeah, come up with something creative. So it's interesting how, I don't want to say unpopular, meaning people know about it and are not interested in it. They, it's just, they, it's not yet popular because they don't know about it. There's no public discourse about this. Um, I, I recently had someone on my channel by the name of Emmanuel Shahaf. He's one of the architectures of one of these, one variation of a federation solution. And I think he proposes, I, I think something like 18 or 20 different cantons within Israel. Um, So he's doing work, uh, but it's a good question how to bring this to to the forefront of discussion. I think part of it really comes down to just having better leadership. Um, You know, we, Palestinian leadership primarily has had a goal of, of, you know, Israel ceasing to exist. And uh, Israeli leadership has kind of just kicked the can down the road and accepted the status quo as the only the only possibility um, without really making an effort to do something uh, transformative to end the status quo, because the status quo is immoral, it's unsustainable, and will always produce more violence. Right. So we, we, need, to, we need to be dedicated to transforming uh, the, the country to be one that, that really allows us to, to, to have peace. And, and I say this to people all the time um, here in Israel, because we, we have a, you know, we're very dedicated to security. Uh, and for good reason, but there is no security better than peace. Well, it's finally here. The CBDistillery.com Black Friday sale is on and it is incredible. Right now you can get up to 40% off everything when you use code BF for Black Friday or for best friend, me. (laughs) Okay, stupid. Uh, Anyway, BF2023 is the code. Choose from a range of expert formulated CBD and other plant-based solutions for relaxation, stress, sleep, and pain after physical activity, even mood and focus. People absolutely rave about their sleep tinctures and gummies. Imagine that, a calm mind and deep sleep throughout the whole night. Sounds amazing. No artificial colors, no artificial flavors or preservatives or sweeteners. Just 100% clean ingredients. So don't miss this massive sale, massive Black Friday sale. And get up to 40% off your order. Visit cbdistillery.com and enter BF2023. That's cbdistillery.com and enter BF2023. Unfortunately, this is not available in my home state of Idaho, Iowa, and South Dakota.